Okay, still in chapter 24 uh, of Acts, and this is where um, Paul has been charged on being a shit disturber, which he was a shit disturber, and being a shit disturber, of course, made made him a little more of a, a nice fellow than he had been before, and we'll get right to the uh, verse 15 that all people, both the good and the bad, will rise from death. Alright, and verse 21, I am being tried by you today for believing that the dead will rise to life. And so verse 22, I'm not sure if it fits, we'll see. Then Felix, who was well informed about the way, brought the herring to a close. Okay, you have to give these people a little credit for this bit because they didn't know about dinosaurs and they didn't really understand evolution and they didn't know about instinct too much, but they had instinct. Instinct is part of us and always has been part of us and in some people it's impossible to ignore and if you aren't lying to yourself and if you kill your television, you will see that it's also part of you. And if you've already killed your television, then this is redundant. But a lot of people still watch television, so they don't know that they're actually alive and that they're animals. And uh, so... Um, <laughs> it's no secret that Jesus Christ did not establish the Christian church. His message was to love one another and love life. And he said, go and preach this gospel. And that is what he meant. And he was, more than anything, and if you look at... Uh, religions of the past and cults and whatnot. This isn't so surprising. He was uh, the not the god of the fish, but he was the spokesman of the fish. He was definitely speaking for the fish, and there are all kinds of hints at this. And you will see this in other cults, and you'll see this in the Bible if you read it. He was extremely connected with fish and when people say he walked on water they are lying he did not walk on the water he walked on the beach he walked along the water he probably had his feet in the water because he really liked it and he probably went swimming a lot he actually went swimming after he had been crucified and hung there for a few hours and then ran out of there and before anybody could get him tied into a tomb he didn't die there but we won't talk about that he went and I think it was in John he swam out to meet Peter on the boat. He liked swimming. He liked the water. He didn't walk on it, but he loved the water, and he loved to be beside it or in it. And you don't have to read too much of the Bible to notice that fish are always part of his deal. He didn't feed the people pig and bread. He didn't feed them chicken and bread. He fed them always fish and bread. And fish are everywhere, and it's not that um, much of a coincidence that he's also called the fish and, um, and that's one of his symbols and I think we should try to make it a symbol again because the fish symbol is a lot nicer than the cross symbol. The cross is simply overused. It's been done too much. It used to be for a different a symbol for something else but this Christianity symbol of Jesus hanging on a cross being crucified we have to get by that. It's just bogging us down. It's a whole it's a whole worship nonsense. It's it's not good. This cross, we have to get them off the top of the mountains, and we have to get them out of our churches. And if you need a symbol, and if you need to hang on to Paulism for a while, put the fish in there, and then maybe we can still call it Christianity, but we have to get over it. We have to get to the point where we realize that we are the gods, and that there is no one true God. There is one true universe, and even that is temporary. It's probably good for another hundred billion years. But even even that is a temporary thing. And it's only true... I mean, truth truth is a relative thing. And you can't say that there's one true God unless you mean the universe. And that's irrelevant. So let's say gods. Let's put the S back on gods. That's the way it used to be. It used to be like that until Moses came along. There were gods, and even if you read the Old Testament, you see he's a jealous God, and that the lords were always the lords, and they were real people. They were not gods. They were people 
posing as gods and giving you dictatorship. So forget this idea of one true God. You can't you can't justify it. You can't even put a picture of it. There is no such thing as a one true God. There is no such thing as a one God. A, a one God cannot exist. You have to have two things. The two things have to coincide before you can even make any rele relevance or reference. If the universe didn't have humans to look at it, it would theoretically not exist. Until we get here and say, look it, it's a universe, then it's, it's just a bunch of matter. I mean, that's very human perspective, but in a way, it is also the paradox of the universe that it doesn't exist until we say it does. But not to let the other point fade away, um, we've got Paul explaining is his one defense to the to Felix at the wherever he was chapter 24 still his one defense was that he was trying to explain that the good and the bad will rise from death and this concept is has been ripped out of the Bible it used to be in there a lot thicker but the church doesn't want us to believe that there's such thing as reincarnation because it would fuck up their whole concept. And reincarnation is not too much different than the concept of evolution. We are all the same creatures living and dying since billions of years. And we, of course, the spirit thing is a little bit weird. But it's somehow, it's real, it hangs in our language, it hangs in something. And there's something there that's real. I mean, there's no such thing as supernatural. Supernatural doesn't exist if the universe is real. But there are things that we don't know about yet. And one of those things we don't understand is what evolution is. We know that it exists. Even the Pope admits now that evolution is real. And after torturing Copernicus um, and Galileo, making him say, okay, the universe isn't real. I think in 1992, the church finally said, okay, the universe is real, and Galileo wasn't lying. And we know now that the universe is real, and that changes everything. And here we are, and there's a very good chance that we have been part, somehow, in it since ever, and something about us continues. And what it is, it's probably not too easy to, to define, but it's more than nothing.